Greetings to the audience who would be interested in peace and conflict transformation in Southeast Asia. My name is Ekapan Pintamanit. I'm the main author of this chapter. This video clip is made for helping the readers of the chapter 2 of the book Peace and Conflict Transformation in Southeast Asia to understand the contents of the chapter easily. The title of this chapter is Understanding Conflict. That means it would lead you to understand the fundamental of the conflict, several theories and notions that are related to the conflict, components of the conflict, and how we could analyze and deal with the conflicts in our lives. The contents of this chapter include first, introduction and objectives. This part will help reader to see what this chapter has to offer. Second, the nature of conflict. There's always a question regarding the reason why human being engages in conflict. To understand the nature of conflict will help reader to see conflict in various aspects. Third, conflict theories and frameworks. Since there are numbers of theories of conflict, this chapter focuses on the most recognized theories of conflict, which is conflict triangle and another theory that might be applicable to several situations in Southeast Asia, which is protracted social conflict. Fourth, violence and nonviolence conflict. The discussion regarding peace always involves two other contents, namely violence and conflict. That requires clarifications, both definitions and their functions in peace and conflict transformation contexts. Fifth, conflict mapping and analysis. It is an important tool to assess conflict situation and help us to deal with different conflict situations. And finally, the conclusion part that will lead you to recheck your understanding and further reading. Introduction and objectives. What to read to understand the principles and concepts in conflict studies, to understand the definitions of peace, conflict, and, and, and violence, to understand the conditions of conflict, to understand the conflict analysis tools, how to read and understand this chapter by yourself. It is best that there will be a lecture along with reading this chapter, but in various cases when a lecture is not available, it is the ideal that a reader could understand this chapter without taking a course. Nature of conflict. Throughout this section, there are several explanations that identify the interpersonal relationships among people and how people interact to each other in different manners. Some of those interactions occurred in conflict situation. However, people try to position themselves in these situations and try to find a way out of these tensions and that is the windows of opportunity to transform conflict from this undesirable situation to more preferable situation. That means People could transform conflict from negative to positive aspects. Furthermore, there are, more, there are some types of conflict that might not require more than one stakeholder, that is called dilemma, which means an individual faces inner conflict within him or herself, so that there is a conclusion that people face conflict in everyday life as a part of our nature. That is why it is encouraged that we transform conflict from negative aspect into the positive one in order to avoid violence. When there are more than one stakeholder in a conflict situation, it is considered as dispute. That means pursuing of incompatible goals by different groups. Conflicts involve two or more parties can be considered by using five categories, as it is shown in this slide. This is one of the most important parts of this chapter, Conflict Theories and Frameworks. We begin with Conflict Triangle. Christopher Michel coined the explanation of conflict that conflict situation refers to any situation in which two or more social entities or parties perceive that they possess mutually incompatible goals. Incompatible goals means the goals of those conflicting parties are unable to be achieved at the same time. In this slide, you can see that 
the triangle A and B and C. A means attitude. This attitude signifies both the rational and emotional aspects of the stakeholders or the actors. And this attitude can come from the experience of the people, can come from the cognitive process of the people in the society, or from some experiences that they have uh, since they were very young until like they grown up. B, here you can see that it is the behavior, which signifies the action of the stakeholders or the actors in the conflict. And C is the contradiction, or you can say that it is the content of the conflict, or you can see the situation of the conflict, which relates to the social structure. So these three points, A, B, and C, are interrelated to each other. Some of the attitudes also influence the behavior. For example, in a conflict situation, when the compatible goals are unable to achieve, and then people can see that the other parties or the other conflicted parties are the obstacle for them to achieve their goals. So then there are certain attitudes that create the hatred or hostility or fear among the others. And then those hatred, fears, and hostility make some aggressive behavior and sometimes make the behavior of being the enemies to the others. Furthermore, some of the attitude also affect the contradiction or the, or the social structure or the content of the conflict, which means that there are certain attitudes that create more obstacle in terms of the regulations or laws or rules of the society that block people from, from achieving their goals. Another important theory that we are focusing in this chapter is protracted social conflict. And we are focusing on the issues of the Southeast Asia because we believe that there are many situations of the conflict in Southeast Asia that are likely to be in these protracted social conflict conditions. In previous parts, we could have discussed that uh, conflict occurred because of differences. Very often, it involved identities such as nationality, race, ethnic city, religion, culture, and many other issues affecting the value of people in the society. But in many conflict situations, when there are tendencies to be protected. It is categorized by Edward Asar that there are characteristics and related factors according to four clusters to the preconditions to the protected social conflict. Those of the four clusters are addressed in this slide. Let's begin with the communal content. The characteristic of the communal content means that in a situation where there are people of the multi-composition, uh, multi-communal composition with some ethnic domination. In many societies where there are number of ethnicity in the community or in the society, and one of those uh, has more influences power and dominating the other ethnicities. So then th uh, that is the conditions in this communal content. And some related factor could be derived from the colonial legacy in some countries or historical pattern of river among the communal actors. Another cluster of the precondition of the protected social conflict is the human needs. Finally, the last cluster of the precondition of protected social conflict is the international linkages. It is not much in this region that uh, they have an economic dependency on national states and political and military client relationships to the other national states. But it is quite important to see that there are tendency that maybe in, in several countries we are beginning to 
increase the degree of reliance of the economic system, of the uh, political, international political camp, and also the reliance of imported weapons and arms into a particular groups of the national states that becoming into the international camp. So this is also something that we have to be focusing on in order to make uh, our society uh, away from being in the protected social conflict situation. Continuing from conflict theories, we have to understand further of the concept of violence and non-violence conflict. First of all, we have to understand what it means by violence. The term violence is commonly understood to mean physical behavior that has the potential to cause harmful consequences and be threat to life resulting in death, physical injury, and deterioration or damage to one's mental condition. To have such definition is not totally means when we talk about violence and non-violence conflict, especially in con uh, peace and conflict transformation theories. We continue with understanding violence and non-violence conflict. Violence of all kinds are not preferable in pursuing peace, so that once the conflict occurred, non-violence solution is recommended. So, we prefer that in any situation of the conflict, we are pursuing peace by using the non-violence means. Most of the social conflict involves several conflicting parties that are unequal in power, so that the power holders always enforce excessive power to overcome the issues of the conflict by suppressing those who have less power. The nonviolent actions are applied in order to fight with those who are abusing of this political power. The notion of nonviolence was coined by John Adams when he was trying to uh, express that the term of nonviolence was first used even before the uh, American Revolution and the war in Lexington. However, before the term nonviolence was used, another term which is has the similar significant is what we call the civil disobedience was used earlier by David Toro. He addresses that this civil dis disobedience is a kind of non-violence and sometimes illegal act undertaken by individuals or groups to oppose government actions that they believe are unjust. So this is the obligation of people to fight back non-violently with the government or the power that is unjust. And later on, this term has been developed and more frequently used uh, after there were the actions of the Mahatma Gandhi or many other nonviolent actors afterward. The final part of this chapter is very important because it is the tools that you might be used to analyze the conflict and also to transform the conflict. You have already learned that the principle of the theories of the conflict, the theory of the violence, and you have learned what it means by violence and nonviolence conflict. You see how the society can transform into the uh, protracted social conflict. But this is the tools that you can analyze the situation, the conflict situation, and also analyze the tools that could be used when you are facing the conflict. This is what we call conflict mapping and analysis. So in this part, you see the mapping tools and you analyze the framework and you can see uh, how to prevent violence conflict and try to pursue peace and how to implement the responses of the peace mechanism. First of all, when you analyze the conflict, so you have to get some description of the conflict. You have to describe the situation. 
you can explain what it means to today that, that the conflict situation occurred and how it is with the history you know what happened in the past who is doing what in the past and what is about the conflict context you know like you see there are political issues whether they are economic issue or the social issue or the relationship issue or sometimes uh, the information issue all of these issues are the, the, the conflict context then you can identify the conflict parties and the issues of the conflict you analyze the dynamic of the conflict and try to look for the management and the res resolution attempts how to do all of these things you use the diagram in doing the conflict mapping the diagram and uh, how to draw the mapping has been addressed in the book so you can follow all of these things in the book you see those symbol that are used and the sign that are used shows the relationship of people those people are the stakeholders or those conflicted parties or those who are important the actors the uh, important actors to the conflict so then to use this diagram drawing the relationship we call the conflict map mapping and then you can see the relationship of people whether what can, uh, what are the relationship and what could be good that can contribute to the conflict resolution or transformation to draw the map and to make the conflict analysis we make you understand the situation to understand the position of the conflicted parties and to understand their relationship furthermore you can clarify the needs of the people the wants fears hatred among those conflicted parties among all of these things you can see the big picture of the of a particular conflict situation then you analyze the, the situation in order to see the possible solution the preferable outcome and the conflict resolution and transformation mechanisms and then you can find the detail in the book that uh, has been addressing about this issue for the conclusion you can see that uh, you can recheck your understanding of the term peace conflict and violence so thank you very much for listening and enjoy discussion about conflict transformation and peaceful means in Southeast Asia.